Okay, Damsel is Netflix's uh, new uh, fantasy film starring Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, it's about a, a woman who is uh, going along with an arranged marriage to help her, not only her family, but her people. Because uh, where she lives, life is hard. Everyone's trying to pull their weight, but resources are low. So she's like, if I do this marriage, the wealth from this kingdom will help us. It'll be great. And she's on board. She's reluctant, but she's not like resisting it, uh, which is usually what happens in this kind of story, uh, which I thought was nice to see. Uh, so, yeah, she goes on to this. Uh, she does all these traditions that are involved in this new place. And then uh, it turns out she's secretly just once she gets married, she's just a sacrifice for these uh, royal assholes to a dragon played by that famous Irani uh, actress with the raspy voice. And I forgot uh, to write her name. I will look that up in a second. Um, but yes, it's got action and adventure and double crosses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Joey C, what did you think of this? Minus the questionable CGI and actors who have a hard time doing it in English accent. I kind of enjoyed <laughs> this movie. Uh, the story seemed a bit fast paced. So like any sort of character development seemed to be out the window for this, but I think Millie Bobby Brown did fantastic and historically have not been a fan. Uh, the story was like a nice mix of like adventure drama and a lot of twists. Actually give this one a shot. I actually enjoyed this one quite a lot. Okay. Gil, what did you think? Uh, I liked it to a point. Like I thought it had a solid start where they set up this fantasy world. Like you said, the arranged marriage starts off on an okay foot where the prince is the pretentious prince you'd expect, but you mm. see some connections between him and the Millie Bobby Brown character. They warm up to each other. And then there's a total tonal shift when she falls off that bridge. And then suddenly it becomes a fairly violent survival mm. movie with fairy tale elements and i thought that was a really cool setup it kind of reminded me of some of the 80s kids movies you would see that are pg but push the limits of a pg rating mm -hmm. but i thought that it started to run out of steam about halfway through where the challenges she was facing in this survival scenario weren't challenging enough i thought and there just wasn't enough variety like a lot of climbing and crawling and Joey, you already mentioned the questionable CGI, <laughs> but honestly, I <laughs> sorry, what did you just drop, <laughs> Crystal? A <The> cat. Sorry, <laughs> the okay. cat was dropped. Yeah. Okay, okay. The living no track. cats on yeah. camera. I thought we learned this lesson a long time ago. Right. I thought I just said something shocking. I was like, the questionable CGI. What? <laughs> Crystal's like, what the fuck? I worked on that CGI. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I would have forgiven the questionable CGI if the rest of it held up, but it, it wasn't bad. You know, I just, I, I didn't, uh, I like the first half better than the second half. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Doug, what did you think? Uh, I hated this. I thought it was <laughs> atrocious. Like this was, I I'm so, so Joey, when you said it moved, this did not move. I rode that fast forward button through most of this movie. It was the CG looks awful. Actually the dragon looks pretty good. Everything else, like every sweeping landscape, the ship on the, like I was shocked at the end of this, when we saw a boat on water and a sky, none of it looked real. I will give a pass to Millie Bobby Brown. Cause basically she's acting against a tennis ball on a stick. Like I, I have sympathy for what she's trying to do. This was horrible. And, and Tony, when you said that the, the dragon was voiced by someone, I thought they just put like the sea, witch from the little mermaids voice through an AI filter. And that's what came out. No, this no, movie's no. awful. I hated this so much. <laughs> this is the worst. This is worse than Roadhouse. Sorry to spoil my thoughts on Roadhouse. <laughs> it's worse than Roadhouse, not by much, but this is the worst thing you made me watch, Tony. I'm sorry. Sorry. I didn't think that, but okay. Um, real quick, the uh, actress who does the dragon's voice is Shora Agdashalo. She has a very hard to pronounce name. Uh, but if you look her up, you'll be like, oh, I've seen that girl. Okay. And if yeah. you look up for credits, like, that's why that voice was familiar. She pops up everywhere. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I know this movie's not for me. Like, if I showed this, and this is no offense to anybody that likes it, if I showed this to my 13-year-old daughter, she'd dig the hell out of this. Like, she would love it. I, I guarantee you. I know it's not for me, but boy, I was so bored instantly watching this. <laughs> 
Uh, Crystal, I'm sure you won't be biased at all because this is a movie about a tough redhead. Uh, what did you think? Yeah. Of <laughs> well, I thought she was beautiful as a redhead. Uh, I didn't hate it at all. I actually enjoyed it. It did feel a little long to me. Uh, mm. Definitely felt longer than it should have been. And uh, yeah, the CGI, I couldn't stand. That kept distracting me. But I liked the story a lot. And I was definitely rooting for her at the end, especially at the very end with the dragon. Like I was, that's what I was hoping to happen. And it was very fulfilling at Mm. the end. At first I was very questionable of how I was going to like this movie. I was like, Oh, this is going to be such a fucking corny little fantasy. And then as soon as I saw the, the flip of Susie gets, she gets pushed. I was like, okay, this is going to get good. I loved how violent it was, but yeah, I liked it. Didn't hate it. That's what I got. Jess, what did you think? See, I'm in the middle with this one. Well, I was entertained at some points. Other points, I'm like, really? Because So, she's in the cave. And the the dragon's like, I can hear you. And then she's like, oh, now you're quiet. And then, like, two seconds later, she'll, like, she gets burned. And she's like, ah! Ah! And it's like, she, she can still hear you. She could still- <laughs> I took that as like-, like the dragon was kind of like fucking with her too. Maybe. Because but- a lot of them got to that safe space. And I think the dragon just liked to fuck with the girls. I, I guess, but for me, I'm just any chance of like, girl, be quiet. Like she could hear you. <laughs> also, freaking love Simon just like. Oh, yeah, that's what that kid in Jurassic World pretty- back then. The, the, uh, that that's also what he was in. I was yeah. just like, I, I was distracted. I'm like, that's Love Simon. I don't, I, I know it's just probably Simon in the movie, but I'm like, no, that's just Love Simon <laughs> throwing the girl into the pit. And then, uh, I do like the like the misunderstanding of like the dragons. Like, yeah, she has to. They have to give me their three daughters, and they, yeah. and then they have to work around like that. I like, but it was just some of the other things. I'm like. I'm like okay, like yeah. I, I, maybe I was just in a good mood, but I actually didn't mind the movie. I thought it was fine. Oh. Uh, you sure, were I watched this the, after Roadhouse, and I had fun okay. with Roadhouse. So, so, so like, the ending was very Game of Thrones esque too, which I like. <laughs> I like, but I also like a badass yeah. girl fucking with a like with a Real powerful quick. dragon. Um, you guys were talking about bad CGI. Uh, Doug, how many Netflix original movies do you watch? I, I try and avoid them for the most part. Oh, okay. no, I, don't, I don't try and avoid them. I just don't. I They're not on my radar. I think like, I think that movie lift affected me more than I thought it did at the time. I knew there were CGI backgrounds in this, but at times I'm like, this is an appropriate place to use a CGI background. Like that's fine. And they're not like in a living room or just a warehouse that's CGI. I'm like, no, <laughs> Dragon Cave. I will accept CGI even on a lower budget. Uh, a ship on the water. Look, it's hard to film on the water. Like, I get it. Mm-hmm. I will accept that. But there's so many movies where they're like, I'm CGI'd into a living room because the actor couldn't be here today. Like, I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Um, overall, I thought it was fine. I learned, though, in this film that... Uh, Millie Bobby Brown can't act. I, I she's been getting by being a quiet person on Stranger Things who can't talk right, and then in the Godzilla movie she just kind of looks sad. Hmm. Uh, this one, like when she's talking, she feels like a first year like theater student. I'm like, oh my god, this is really bad. And actually, I might be disappointing you, Doug. All right, so I had to look up who her parents were because her dad produced this film. I'm like, okay, we got some nepotism going on here. Her mom's name is Kelly Brown, and I Googled it, and there's an no. actress. No, there's an actress it's not Ke- her. It's not her. I know. For a minute, I thought it was Kelly Brown from Hey Dude. No. But I think it's just... <laughs> it's, by the way, Kelly yeah. Brown from Hey Dude, you can't find any information on her, and you can't find any information on Millie Bobby yeah, Brown. Yeah, you can. This is how much I like Hey Dude. They have <laughs> conventions. She she was oh just in God. she was just in Hartford. Uh, well, a on Wikipedia, I couldn't find her, so okay. I went through this whole thing thinking she was Hey Dude's daughter. That's uh, more than just liking Hey Dude. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I love Hey Dude. <laughs> so anyway, um. Yeah, overall, again, I think the movie is okay. The action was fun. It didn't, I I guess it dragged for some of you. It didn't drag for me. I like the Uh, ending. 
Yeah, the ending was fun too. The I ending... just think she's actually fine when she was going through the cave and she had those nice quiet moments. It's when she's like talking out loud to herself. I'm like, oh, this is. Crazy. I was just gonna say that when she actually speaks. Yeah, it's not so great, but her facial expressions, yeah. uh, exactly, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I yeah. agree. My she, favorite, uh, the words don't come natural to her. Yeah, my favorite visual scene was when she was climbing through the crystals. That yeah, was just cool. pretty. Um, yeah. Uh, this does like um, who said this felt like a PG film? Was that you? Gil? I said that. Yeah, yeah. I I get what you're talking about now. I'm like, yeah, this feels like something I would have rented on like a directed video fantasy kids movie. Just mm. again, like we said, with a bigger budget. So maybe that's why I felt a little nostalgic for it. Uh, but no, she's pretty bad uh, when she talks in the movie. <laughs> uh, but I didn't hate it as much as Doug. Thought it was passable. Uh, but you're right, Doug. You are right. I feel like a teen girl or a younger yeah. girl. This would be a good one to show her because it's also not like not to get like woke or whatever. It's not like cringe. It never got cringe for me. It's a very multi multicultural fantasy world, but I'm fine with that. But she's not like she's a tough lady girl, but she's not bitching about men the whole time. Like, oh, well, it's been a minute since we had one of these. Uh, Yeah. And she's well, not I, invincible. I like oh, she sorry. gets hurt and there is a struggle for her, which. And there's I mean, a reason going she, in. I was right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, finish. And I was just going to say, the movie starts with voiceover where she's like, there's lots of stories of damsels in distress. This isn't one of them. So I thought I it was going off. to be a little bit like she's invincible and can take on anything. But it wasn't. She was an underdog, and you watched her struggle. So I thought it was good in that respect. Yeah, uh, and they, sh they like, show that she lives in, like, a pretty shitty place, and she's, like, mm -hmm. pretty, like, she's, like, chopping wood and shit i mean i don't think that's gonna help you against a dragon but it's better than just oh i'm a lady and now i know how to use a sword all of a sudden and it's like what it's like uh remember pirates of the caribbean kira knightley in the second movie is like six months after the first movie and she's able to kill wield two swords at once and kill people without looking i'm like oh where was is, this is transition Tony, is that Tony didn't bother. doing this I, I don't like this i feel like the type of place that she was in that uh, working a sword and stuff like that would have been in her any type of training or something like that. That's that type of kingdom. It's not like because when they go to the new kingdom, they're like, oh my gosh, like it's basically princess treatment. She's never had that, which is yeah. pretty obvious. I think she's been that wasn't her first time with the sword. Yeah, no, like I, I never felt like, oh, this is a stretch. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, totally for a Netflix movie, it's totally passable, which mm. is more than I could say for a lot of Netflix movies, especially ones I watched recently.